Hey everyone, so because it is World Mental Health Week, I decided to take this opportunity to do a follow-up about my video that I made two years ago about my personal struggles with depression, anxiety, and burnout. And because these videos are actually really difficult to make, I'm filming this by myself and I'm gonna edit it by myself. So I'm really sorry about all the shadows and everything that you can probably see. I'm definitely not as good as my camera guy at fixing up my studio set. But yes, the honest truth is that this year, it's been a huge challenge for me. As I've shared before on this channel, my entrepreneurial spirit and that A-type personality that comes with many of us entrepreneurial types has led me to live with anxiety and depression as a result of burnout and stress. And I know a lot of you were worried after my last video, but the truth is, is that things had gotten a lot better and then COVID came along and things got a lot worse. But I am happy to say that because of the techniques that I had learned prior to COVID-19, I've been able to use them again to help me manage the new stress that COVID-19 has brought with it. So I just wanna share some of those techniques with you in case they can help some other people out there as well. But before I do that, I just wanna share my personal story because when I first talked about this two years ago, depression and anxiety, they were really new things for me. As a child and teenager, I was extremely positive. While anyone who watches my videos knows I definitely have a cynical, sarcastic side to my personality, the truth is New Zealand does often have a dry, darker sense of humor. The reality is that I'm usually a glass is half full type person, so I look for the good in things, which I honestly believe is an awesome attitude to have if you self-identify as someone who has big goals and wants to achieve big things because, well, big goals, they really happen overnight. You often have to make many mistakes to learn from them so that you can achieve your goals. And having a positive attitude and rather than seeing mistakes as signs that you should stop like most people do and instead see them as motivation to overcome them and use them as fuel to achieve your future success, well, this is a very important attitude to have. So you might think then that since positive attitudes are so important to achieving big goals that I, an entrepreneur with multiple streams of income, must be immune to depression and anxiety, right? Well, sadly, as I discovered, that's not the case. For me, my first sign of anxiety and depression was video games. Growing up, I used to love playing video games. In fact, one of my motivations as a teenager for starting my first successful business and online store was so that I would have more time so that I could play more video games. That was why it came as a huge shock to me that the more my business and income grew, the less I enjoyed video games. And I realized something. It wasn't just video games that I was no longer enjoying. For example, if I sat down to watch a TV show, I couldn't watch it for more than a few minutes at a time. And while I was never a big reader, there was no way I could ever get past the first few pages of a book if I tried to read it. I didn't realize this at the time, but this actually has a name, anhedonia, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, but yes, this is the loss of interest in things that used to be enjoyable. And over time, my symptoms got worse and worse, so for example, while I've never been the world's best sleeper, I wasn't the world's worst sleeper, but within a short space of time, I could no longer stay asleep for more than one hour. Even worse, every time I would go to sleep, my dreams, they'd be filled with nightmares, which created the worst cycle because I would avoid going to sleep because my dreams were filled with nightmares, which ironically resulted in even more nightmares. The final straw for me, was when I started to experience bounding pulses throughout my entire body, which is the strong throbbing of an artery. Feeling this was extremely scary. I started to wonder, did I have a heart condition? Was I going to die? So I ended up going to visit the doctor and we noted down all of my symptoms. So she took out her stethoscope and she listened to my heart and she's like, yep, yeah, your heart is absolutely fine. Instead, it sounds, Sarah, like you might be suffering from anxiety and depression. And I was like, wait, what? So I don't have a heart condition? No. So I'm not going to die? No. Okay, but you see, I don't understand. I lead a very privileged life and I have a successful business, which has been my personal lifelong dream. How on earth could I be depressed? Well, she looked at me and she said, well, Sarah, that business of yours, it might very well be a big culprit. And you know what? She was right. And it honestly shouldn't have been a surprise to me. Several studies have shown this, such as a study done at the UC Berkeley that showed that entrepreneurs 
are significantly more likely to report a mental illness over their lifetime than non-entrepreneurs. Which is kind of ironic because as Jessica Bruto reported on her Inc.com article on the subject, for a long time, talking about the subject was pretty taboo in the entrepreneurial community. Everyone wants to give off the image of being perfect and having everything together so that they'll be given more opportunities. Which creates even more pressure on us and makes our anxiety and depression worse. There is this hilarious yet very educational website, Wait But Why? And in this series of comics, the author sums up exactly why social media is linked to Lucy's depression who is the protagonist of the story. Essentially, Lucy and her friends are constantly crafting an unrealistic image of their actual lives on social media, and this creates an awful cycle. They believe the unrealistic images portrayed by others, and so it makes them question why they don't have a perfect life too. Why did they miss out? So they try to craft that life so that nobody will know the truth about theirs, causing their peers to keep doing this too. But unfortunately for Lucy, the self-flagellating cycle has another reason why it's doomed to never end. And that is, because of this, the hedonic treadmill, otherwise known as hedonic adaption, is the psychological phenomenon that eventually, whether good things or bad things happen to us, we all tend to return to our baseline level of happiness. And while the hedonic treadmill can sometimes be the bane of my existence, the reality is, is that it's not actually a bad thing. In fact, studies have shown that it makes humans incredibly resilient and adaptable. Roxanne Lee Silver from the Northwestern University studied accident victims who had sustained severe spinal cord injuries. One week after the accident, the victims were reporting a lot of negative emotions, more so than positive emotions. But by week eight and nine, a lot had changed. Positive emotions now outweighed negative ones. And eventually, the study showed, most had returned to their base level of happiness. But of course, this means that it goes the opposite way too. Philip Brickman and Dan Coates from the Northwestern University and Ronnie Janoff Bullman from the University of Massachusetts followed 22 lottery winners and studied their happiness levels. The study found that while there was an initial boost in happiness, their happiness ultimately flatlined to the same level it was before. Because I'm a positive person, I believed in myself that if I put my mind to it, if others could achieve these big goals that I wanted to achieve, then there's no reason why I couldn't achieve them too. So I chased after them really hard. And so for me, of course, it's always been monetarial goals. And so I'd achieve one monetarial goal and then I'd have to go and achieve another and another. And as I have discovered, chasing after monetarial goals leads to the opposite of happiness. <laughs> and that's because of the hedonic treadmill. The hedonic treadmill means then that unlike what you're expecting, that you'll achieve a big goal and you'll suddenly be happy. Instead, that goal just becomes normalized and you have to set a bigger goal. And so of course for me, that was money. And so I had to earn more and more and more money. And it literally never ends. And so if you're someone like me who keeps thinking that if you will just achieve another big goal that you will be happy, trust me, this is a fruitless desire. And instead, it actually leads to something else which a team of psychological scientists from the Karolinska Institute of Sweden discovered. When we work, we fire different neurons in our brain. Well, if we do this too much, our brain compensates and tries to work more and more efficiently. And so it starts to fire your neurons together. And as a result, it becomes harder to access different parts of your brain. And this is what burnout is. Ever wondered why you struggle to be productive and focus on tasks when you feel burnt out? Well, it's not because you're lazy for not wanting to work 16 hours a day, which would leave you with literally no time to do anything but work or sleep. No. It's partially because you struggle to access the parts of your brain that manage focus and emotional reasoning, since other neurons are firing like crazy. And if left untreated, burnout can turn into lingering depression and anxiety like it did for me. But there is a saying that knowledge is power. And so for me, acknowledging I needed help and needed to make a change was crucial. And for me, the way that I did that was I acknowledged what I struggled with. And that was the fact that I was on a constant fruitless quest to get more and more thinking that this is what would bring me happiness. When in actuality, the true pathway to happiness is this, mindfulness, noticing and embracing small moments of joy in your life. Because yes, while it is true that achieving big goals does bring some short-term happiness, because of the fact that it takes a long time for us to complete those big goals, they're gonna happen few and far between. And so in the meantime, it's much smarter to fill your life with lots of easy to achieve things that make you happy, such as eating your favorite healthy meal, or patting a super cute dog, or relaxing with a cup of nice coffee in the morning. And that's where mindfulness is extremely important. There is a saying, depression is the past, 
Anxiety is future and happiness is the present. When you are depressed, you are ruminating on your past mistakes. And when you're anxious, you're worrying about whether you will be successful in the future. But when you are happy, you are appreciating what you have right now. Chaining together lots of small yet easy to achieve moments of joy in your life is the scientifically proven way to create long-term happiness. But it's useless if you are not mentally present in the moment because if you aren't, you won't notice and savor your cup of coffee, you'll just mindlessly drink it. And so for me, I'll be honest, travel was a really big way that I achieved mindfulness. By meeting other cultures and seeing other places, I learned that I was extremely privileged and also saw that there was so much I didn't know. And I was extremely grateful to have an opportunity to learn from others and become wiser. By traveling, I achieved a state of mindfulness. And so it was a massive blow then when New Zealand shut its borders to the rest of the world. And I recently discovered that those borders, they may not be open for quite some time. And so suddenly I could once again feel that bounding pulse in my arm and my neck. As I watched and read the endless bad news, enjoying the present is extremely difficult when your present reality is not what you would like it to be. And unfortunately, part of that present reality was that going outside and meeting people in person wasn't really something that during lockdowns I could do. And so I seek solace online and social media. You know, that's social media. And so with my usual technique for staying mindful and thus avoiding burnout taken away from me, I could feel that depression and anxiety creep back into me. And March was an extremely difficult month. And April was a very difficult month. May was a difficult month. But over time, because of the fact that I have been living with anxiety and depression for a few years now, I was able to take some of the techniques that I have learned in the past that helped me then and that were able to help me now. And so I hope that by sharing them with you today during World Mental Health Week that they might be able to help you too if you are also struggling with this. The first thing I've done is I've just simply acknowledged the stress and chosen to not beat myself up for feeling that way and just not being ashamed to admit it, which can be hard with social media where everyone is trying to pretend that their lives are perfect, but let's be real, right now, they're not. And who knows, by acknowledging it, you may be able to help someone else. I remember being so afraid to admit this, I was really scared actually to create this video. I thought that people would be mad that someone as privileged as me would be struggling with this. But so many people left comments saying that my video helped them and so by being honest, you might actually give someone else a safe space to be honest with you too about how they feel and help them. And I'm really happy that my video could help others. And the second thing I have done is I've stopped reading all of the news. So much pandemic news. Sure, it is important to be informed, but something that has been proven is that reading the news can heighten anxiety. As the Anxiety and Depression Association of America explains, we often watch the news to make us feel in control, but actually the reality is we aren't in control. And so learning to make peace with that is the best thing that we can do. And this is why pre-pandemic, this was a boundary that I was implementing in my life and a boundary that I know a lot of successful entrepreneurs have done as well to protect ourselves from a constant stream of bad news bringing us down. However, of course, now more than ever, it is still important and crucial to stay informed. Which is why the World Health Organization recommends that if, like me, staying up to date with the news is a source of anxiety and stress, stick to news that is focused on practical steps that you can take to stay safe and limit reading the news to one to two times a day. By doing this, I have given myself the space to see the good in life again because I'm not being constantly bombarded with the bad. And while I cannot travel, there is a scientifically proven way that I have leveraged to ground my swirling hedonic treadmill brain to instead focus on gratitude. And that is mindful walking. Yep, I've moved downtown and now walking is more convenient than driving. See, being honest with myself has been a very important part of learning to live with anxiety and depression. And if I'm brutally honest, I'm bad at setting aside time to practice mindfulness with something like yoga. So instead I've put myself in a situation where I want to walk everywhere because it's more convenient and this gives me the perfect opportunity to spend some time doing mindful walking which just means that as you take each step you pay attention to how it feels and you pay attention to how you're breathing. By focusing on your body in the moment it helps to ground you and bring you back to the present. And the best thing is just a 5 or 10 minute walk can sometimes be the difference. 
So what do you do to maintain mindfulness? I'd love it if you could let me know in the comment section below because it might help some others out as well. And if this video did help you, then I'd love it if you could pass it on because in honor of Mental Health Awareness Week, I am dedicating the AdSense money that this video earns to UNICEF's COVID-19 Relief Fund, which is helping families and children stay safe throughout COVID-19. And if you'd like to join me in supporting this amazing charity, I'll have information on how you can do so in the video description below.